We've looked at five plants, the bush sunflower, sea dahlia, tidy tips, groundsel, and goldfields. We've looked at various features of each one. Let's try now to put this together and sum up by comparing them directly along some of the major dimensions that we've examined, the flower head, their leaves and foliage, and their undersides. Bear in mind that there are many more characteristics of these plants that we haven't discussed. For example, the videos were all recorded in March and early April. This is a time when these flowers first bloom. So if you see a yellow Asteraceae in October or November, or if you see one in the desert, it's probably not one of these. So season and habitat are two very obvious cues that are important but we haven't discussed. Let's begin now by looking at flower heads. The first flower we saw was the bush sunflower. The bush sunflower sits atop its own stalk all by itself. It's a large daisy-like flower that has a central dark disc. We learned that that central disc is actually composed of a large number of disc flowers or florets. Then we looked at the sea dahlia. The sea dahlia resembles the bush sunflower in that it's a large flower that sits atop its own stalk. It's similar in other respects, but one noticeable difference is that its central disc is yellow. The sea dahlia inhabits a very narrow range along the coast. It likes to live near the sea. It's a threatened plant. Tidy tips is quite a standout. It's easy to identify because of the yellow center disc and the white edges. Each ray flower or petal has three lobes, which are very distinct in this instance. Common groundsel tends to have smaller flowers than either the bush sunflower or sea dahlia. It's leggy. It has multiple flower heads per stalk. Also, the ray petals are often skinnier with space between them. But beware, often doesn't mean always. That's why we need to look at multiple cues. Common goldfields was the last of the Asteraceae that we saw. It typically occurs in large masses, fields of gold. It grows lower to the ground than the other plants. The flower heads are also small, and the ray petals are generally shorter and stubbier than that of, say, groundsel. They're very cute. Although flowers are the first to catch our attention, it's also important to look at the foliage. Foliage comes up first, and so recognizing the foliage will alert us to what type of flower we can expect when it blooms. Foliage of these plants is, in fact, quite different. Compare the foliage of the bush sunflower with that of the sea dahlia. They look nothing alike, do they? This is groundsel. It often has toothed or hook-like margins to the leaves. Goldfields, in contrast, has a narrow, smooth-edged leaf. And here is tidy tips, with leaves that are somewhat similar in terms of shape and size, but hairy. Finally, we come to the involucre, not a word that comes up often in general conversation. When many people admire a car, they don't typically look underneath the hood. And when people admire flowers, they usually don't look at the underside. The flower is where the action is, right? But we've already seen examples of flowers that look similar and so might be confused, goldfields and groundsel, for example. But if you look at the underside, they're quite different. So it's a great way to nail down an ID if you're not sure. The involucre is a set of modified leaves or bracts that you find in Asteraceae and which surround the bud when it's growing and then can provide support for the flower once it's bloomed. We see a good example of this by looking at the green bracts, the involucre, in a goldfields flower that's at an early stage of blooming. The involucre surrounds it and protects it. Here's a side view where you start to see the shape and form of the involucre. And then at a later stage, here is a mature goldfields. Notice the involucre. It's very distinctive and characteristic. Now, compare that with the involucre of groundsel. It's really, really different. Here's another view, and here's another view. So you can see from the underside, groundsel and goldfields look quite different. Tidy Tips has its own shape, quite different. Doesn't look like it would provide a lot of support, does it? And lastly, we come to bush sunflower and sea dahlia, each with their own specially shaped involucre. Let's put them all together. So what's the take-home message? Well, there are several. We've looked at only five plants in this set of videos, and there are many more that we'll be looking at in coming months. 
One lesson will hopefully be to alert you to the kinds of clues that you should look for as you become familiar with the plants in the reserve, and to appreciate that sometimes it'll be necessary to look at multiple cues to be sure of a plant's identification. A second lesson is that these same clues will be useful as we consider other plants, though there will be some new clues as well. So we hope that from these five plants, your eye will start to be trained when it looks at other plants. Finally, of course, the most important lesson of all, the flowers around us are quite beautiful. The real benefit of learning to identify them is not for the sake of identification. It's so that we can learn to pay close attention to them and to better appreciate their beauty.